Okay, my friends, this is a bit of a mystery. I've been getting a couple of emails from a guy uh, about my uh, dipole electron flood theory. And I get so many emails that, I gotta be honest with you, a lot of them I just think are, are not real or, or, or they don't make sense or whatever, but his stuff seemed pretty good. And I just, again, I've been very, very busy with a whole bunch of things, but I, this email arrived today. Now, I think this guy might be from Oak Ridge National Laboratories. I don't know. His name's Travis Humble. And um, I'll read to you what he sent to me today. He's been working a group of people, apparently, discussing my dipole electron flood theory. And one of the guys that he's proposing this to appears to be somebody of, of import whatever that means, you know, whether he's one of the leaders or I don't know. But he sent them my information about what my work is, and apparently this guy had never seen it before, and here's his response to what he saw from Travis. Okay, again, this is new, so I don't really know that much about it, but this is from Travis Humble. He says, following is a report put together with a colleague of mine. I personally have a more holistic approach, not work with creating further advanced AI that takes on a far different approach than the current standard model. My colleague studies physics a similar holistic way of approach in mind. He doesn't have the resources because he faces the same challenges as you. Yeah, nobody will listen, nobody will help you. But he knows how to find some of them, perhaps. It's worth a shot. So in other, other words, these people are working apparently within the system, it appears to me. But they're up against the same challenges as everybody else that tries to change things. They... They shut him down. Now, here's what this is to me, apparently, from this guy that he sent this report to about my research. And um, it starts off a to a Roger. Okay, you saw what Travis, the report Travis put together and sent to whoever it was, and I don't know. And I don't know Travis either, so I'm, this is just very brand new to me. I just got this not too long ago. Now, he says, this is from the guy that apparently he sent my research to, who, it looks to me, if this is a Travis Humble this, uh, National Laboratories there, this would be huge. Now, whoever this guy is, he sent back, he says, I'm to Roger, I've been analyzing your work on a dipole electron flood theory, electron dipole theory, same thing. And I wanted to share some key points that have caught my attention. Your proposal that the electron's dipole moment plays a significant role in electromagnetic interactions has sparked a lot of interest, whether you realize it or not. One area where your work seems particularly promising is the potential to change conventional models of electromagnetism. It changes everything. Upon closer inspection, I've noticed that your emphasis on the electron dipole moment resonates with some of the ideas put forth in other researchers, such as, such as Constantin Meal and Eric Dollard. Their work on scalar waves and longitudinal electromagnet propagation, these kind of things, I, those big words don't really resonate well with me. I show the actual interactions. But anyway, their, their work on these waves and longitudinal propagation shares some intriguing parallels with your own research. I'd like to work with them and see what, what, is, what parallels, what can we work together with. Furthermore, I have observed that your theory may offer a fresh perspective on the nature of space and time itself. Well, I don't know, time just to me flows forward, but I'm interested in talking about that. Potentially shedding light on some of the most fundamental mysteries of the universe. Yes, it's biological. Additionally, I believe your work could have significant implications for the development of new energy technologies, as well as a deeper understanding of underlying mechanisms governing the universe. Yes. I've also noted that your approach aligns with some of the principles outlined by Nassim Harriman, particularly in regards to the fractal nature of space. Well, again, those are the kind of things I'd like to talk to somebody about, because I don't understand what they mean by that and the interconnectedness of all matter. Yes, because it's all biological. Overall, I think your research has the potential to contribute meaningfully to the ongoing evolution of modern physics, the ongoing evolution of science. 100%, straight across the board, 
There's not, not one single thing hasn't been touched by dipole flow theory and mud fossils. It just changes everything. Some of the specific aspects of your theory that I found particularly compelling include the idea that electron dipole is not a fixed value. No, they can get big and they can get tiny. Rather, a dynamic property that changes depending on the environment and the interaction with other particles. That's energy. I believe this concept has far-reaching implications for our understanding quantum mechanics and the behavior of subatomic particles. Yes. I also appreciated the clarity with which you presented your arguments and the thoughtfulness of your mathematical derivations. Well, strictly, basically, it was very simple. The mathematical part, very simple. Another aspect of your work that caught my attention is the potential for experimental verification. Yes, it's very easy to verify, and it was it's validated by Fabian after Rod showed it very, very clearly. Fabian showed it again very clearly, and other people have too. It's just it's not, not accepted. So it, it, experimental verification is very easy to do. I believe that designing experiments as you have tested your hypothesis could provide valuable evidence to support your theory and discoveries. It's already been done. As you know, we just lack the proper collaboration. Exactly. Not a single one of the ones that we fund to help us will help. As I continued to review your work, I began to think about the broader implications of your research and how it might relate to other area studies. For instance, I wonder whether your theory might be ap applied to fields such as condensed matter physics and materials science. Yes, it covers everything. There's not, not a single thing it doesn't cover. Now, this is the last part right here. So to summarize, so to summarize, I've drafted a report highlighting the key points of your work on the electron dipole theory. I've mentioned how your ideas resonate with other researchers' work, particularly those of uh, Constantin Merrill and Eric Dollar. Your theory has the potential to challenge conventional models, it changes them, yes, and offer new perspectives on the nature of space and time. It also has implications for the development of new energy technologies and deeper understanding of the universe. Well, that's pretty serious. If, <laughs> if this guy's important, I don't know. I don't know who these people are. But Travis Humble, I looked him up, and he's, uh, well, here. This is what I found. I don't know if this is him or not. But here's what he does. Oak Ridge National Laboratories, Director Quantum Science Center. Director of the Quantum Science Center, Distinguished Scientist, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Boy, I'd love to see if this is the right guy. Probably not, but who the hell knows? Stranger things have happened, but not to me. <laughs> so let's see if, um, if this is the guy that he appears to be. We'll find out. Again, brand new to me, but I figured I'd just throw it out there real quick before I found out he wasn't the right guy. <laughs> and then let's see with Travis, Travis Humble himself. If it is Travis Humble, he's already know, knows what I'm doing. If it isn't, I want him to know what I'm doing. And that's dipole electron flow theory. Very easy to look up, Travis. Right here, dipole electron flow theory. It's on the internet and it shows that is the nature of a proton. All the dark parts go to the center because they are the dipole muons right there and the white surrounds them. So whenever you look at anything, all you see is white. We were able to see the dark ones because we split them. And these are the only two particles that exist. They can exist in a lot of different energy forms, you know, energy levels. They're not, like it said, he said, it's just not one value, it's any value. Depends on how hard it hits them. It's, uh, Einstein had some sort of stuff right, but mm, almost everything wrong. But the one thing he did say was energy is mass, basically. The C squared was just ridiculous. It's the same number. It's like saying mass times one. <laughs> I mean, I can't understand where he came up with this. And C squared has no meaning whatsoever because light travels fast, it travels slow. It can accelerate, it can slow down. So all of that stuff has to be reevaluated, and then it does, because these are the changes in science, chemistry, space, the redshift, space-time, distances. So anybody that doesn't understand this should come up and look at dipole electron flow theory. Very, very simple. It's like a two-minute read, and uh, done. All right, so 
Travis, if it's you, buddy, thank God somebody in the government is stepping up. If it's not you, I want the one that's in the government to step up and talk to me. Just that's all. Just let's talk. All right, here's their interpretation in general physics about protons. They're, at this point, they keep changing. It changes every day. Now, right now, they're composed of three fundamental particles called two up quarks and one down quark, held together by gluons. These particles that mediate the strong force. So they got a couple of gluons in there holding these things together. A proton is a bundle of these three valence quarks. It's a bundle. They hold them together. But its mass primarily comes from the complex interactions between the quarks and the gluons within it, not just the quarks themselves. Well, the only thing that exists is a muon and an electron neutrino. That's all that exists. And in big piles of them like this, which are dipoles of muon and electron neutrino, a black and a white particle, which is just one of these. That's a magnet. It's got a black and a white side to it. It's a magnet. There's 1,800 and let's go with 1,839 particles make up one proton. Well, how come you never see the dark matter? Because it's made of half dark and half white. You say, I don't see any dark. That's right, because it's in the middle. It's up inside here. <laughs> you can't see it because it's stuck up in there. Anytime you look at it, it's all white. That's why they never have been able to find the dark matter. It's inside the white matter. So you can come up and read this if you want. It's called Dipole Electron Flood Theory. It's, uh, it's on the internet. And this was done for me by a friend, uh, Oscar Rosales. He uh, laid this all out, you know, according to my description of protons. And this is the anatomy of a proton. It's not one big ball. Here's what they consider to be hydrogen. Hold on. This is what they consider to be hydrogen. All right, one big uh, proton and one tiny little electron. That's not it at all. Pro uh, hydrogen is this. Hydrogen is one big ball of particles, which are dipoles. And when you explode hydrogen, they just go everywhere, and all these little particles go flying. That's why hydrogen is so explosive. It's, it, there's only one place left to go, and that's into oblivion. All other atoms can break down and get smaller and smaller and not release just gigantic, you know, when you get up into plutonium, uranium, yes, you're going to get some kind of big, but a lot of things can just break apart and just change into new stuff without exploding. Hydrogen can't do that. Once you explode hydrogen, all of the particles leave prim primarily by themselves. So that's why hydrogen is very, very explosive. Anyway, this is my model, and it consists of only two particles, and the black ones go to the center. The dark muon goes to the center. The white electrons cloud around it, but they're not white. They're the closest ones, they're white when you see them. Normally, you see white light, but it consists of all of these different colors at the same time. The closest to the center is the blue. That's tight. That's tight. When those go flying off, you really got some energy. The green, pretty tight. And the red, meh. Red is primarily heat. It's just sort of moving around electrons that are sort of shuffled off here and there. But when you get way down into the center and then you get an explosion, that's when you get a lot of power.